So this system is VE based. Now everybody says that. You see that and everybody in the, on the market, they say VE based, volumetric efficiency. But what they don't tell you is how far they go to, to actually produce the VE when you go ahead and program a system. Now what I mean by that is this, we base our VE calculations on seven different tables. And I'll show you those in a second. Everybody else does it between three and four. That's it. But that's not really that helpful to the end user. Three or four will not get them that close. One of, one of the things that we actually uh, uh, do, okay, in those configurations is that any time you make a change, it affects the VE. Okay? I'll give you a little bit of example. Let's go to this 350. What you're looking at is a dashboard. I, uh, I, I advise you, I even uh, tell you, go ahead and download everybody. You know, the, everybody that sells EFI pretty much has their own software online, demos. Go ahead and load whatever ones you can find and then load ours. This is a dashboard. You can view everything in front of you. You see what goes on in front of you. I guarantee you nobody else has this. Everybody gives you these little numbers. You know, 2D, nothing special. We actually want the end user to see, for instance, what is their field ratios. We go on the systems to set the system up. You do have a 350, right? Well, 355, let's say, 30 ohm. Eight cylinder, number one, the VE calculation. Number two is communication and VE calculation. Number three is injector flow rate. Pounds per hour, what the injector is rated at. Number four, fuel rate of pressure. And I'll explain how that works in a second. Those are the first four right there in front of you. Under ignition, you have 11 different setups you can choose from on and plus. So we cover a lot of different things. One ECM can run multiple different applications. In our map configuration display, everything uh, and whether it's a one, two, three, or even a four bar, which we do have, we, we let the end user basically pick his own way of looking at it. PSI, APA, percentage, whatever you feel comfortable with. Fuel injector firing order. It's a nitrogen ignition, this is the injector firing order. If it's a sequential, but it says in the upper right hand corner, you put your you know, whatever the ignition firing order is to fire the injectors and so forth. This is the first thing you do when you set up your range pen. Compression ratio is not part of the VE. Compression ratio is part of our barometric tables. This system has a built-in barrel sensor. Nobody else has that. When you drive, from zero, let's say you're going on a cruise, you start at sea level and you go up to 12,000 feet. This system automatically changes, it updates as you climb, higher and higher. <clears throat> Most of the other systems, you gotta pull over every two, 3,000 feet because your car starts to act funny. Shut the car off, turn the car, turn the key on. Let the map sensor for three seconds read, read the barrel, that's what they do. When you first turn the key on, their systems read the barrel through the map sensor. That normally, checks your load on your engine. They don't have a barrel, so that's what they do. Once they read the mass sensor, they convert it to the barrel readings, then you can stop the car and drive off. We don't do that. You can drive it all day long, whether you're at zero or 12,000 feet, not a problem. We move on to the next setup. Next setup, you wanna, this is your relevant This is your auxiliary stuff, alarms, for instance, default ignition cutoff is your basic rev limiter, default fuel cutoff. Some people want to use both. Fuel restore is normally below the ignition cutoff. You never want to bring the fuel back on while the ignition is still breaking up. Auxiliary stage input function, this is a wire that basically you send 12 volts to. It does two things. In the IFT forward request, it looks for a signal from the AC clutch. When the AC comes on, you, let's say it's showing 11 counts, the IAC opens that much further, so your engine doesn't stall or die out. In the two-step rev limit, if you 
you switch the switch, it will actually activate a two-step for the guy to have to go on bridge there. The starting prime pulse, that's hardly ever used, but that's for, we put that in there for people who use a regular blower, you know, like a 671, and they put <coughs> all the fuel on top. So when you crank it, sometimes you have to crank and crank and crank to get the fuel the thing to start. Well, in this case, if this is switched, if it's enabled, you just press the accelerator twice like on a carburetor and it squirts fuel for the injectors. Fuel pump duration, that's basically how long it primes when you first turn the key on. Your average vehicle from the factory, you hear the pump run for like three to five seconds. We can control it up to nine seconds. Power enrichment mode, uh, we'll speak about that a little bit later. Exhaust feedback sensor, do you have a standard O2 sensor or do you have a linear wideband O2 sensor? We can run both. Not only can we run our own, but we actually give the person a generic if you have somebody else's O2. We don't recommend it, but we do a lot. Closed loop fueling, disabled or enabled. In this case, it's enabled and he's got a standard. Well, we'll switch it to a wide end. And then what happens is, as you can tell, this switch now is 9 to 1 to 20 to 1, the air fuel up here. And this is the box where it's running and shows you what it is right in front of your face. This also has an <coughs> output basically to control AC. An AC disable, this is something that we have where if you go wide up the throttle, you tell the AC clutch disable threshold. When do you want the AC to disengage the clutch? Otherwise, you're going to blow the clutch up. You know, not too many AC uh, compressors like 7,000 RPM. Auxiliary fan output. In, uh, in cluster, you only have the shift output. Fan 2 is only in a pro cluster or Gen 7. And as you can tell, you have the shift output RPM, whatever you want, which actually will trigger a signal to a wire. That's a ground signal, it will light off the shift light. Fan 1, on and off. Plus, if you have AC, anytime the AC comes on, you want fan 1 to turn on, which most of the time you get yes. <coughs> Now, why is this system, again, so much better than the other ones? I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. We'll go over them real quick, okay? In this particular uh, uh, thruster, before we go to the pro stuff. This is a VE table. This is what we call a VE table. This is where the fuel is. Normally, there's a little blue box that hovers around wherever it's idling at, RPM versus load. This is load, this is RPM. The smaller the number, of course, the less fuel bigger the number, the more fuel. Now, the numbers don't mean anything as in percentage. These are just numbers. Everybody asks me, does that mean it's 46%? Uh, 40, uh, no, no, it's not 46%, it's just 0.46. Behind, there's one thing that we show you, others don't. Behind every VE, there's always a pulse width and duty cycle, right? For the people that don't know what that is, pulse width is how long the injector stays open in milliseconds. We, we also convert the pulse width via the percentage, so you know if you're running out of injector, let's say, before you even start the car. When you're online, it does not show up because it takes the air temperature out of the air sensor. But for now, let's say it's 110 degrees air temperature. This is pulse width. A lot of people can tune with, with pulse width that have used older systems. And we can convert it to duty cycle. Like in this case, the 36 pounders are running at 64 percent while over the throttle at peak, about 5,700. So he's got plenty of injector left. But let's say that same motor, right? This is, this is where you're going to see the differences, how we calculate VE. The same exact motor. You say, you know what? I don't have 36 pounders, I only got 19s. 